everybody. All right. It's good to see you all here tonight, Christian Education Night. As you know, uh, Pastor Lynette has been speaking about the power of love uh, over the past few weeks, and we're going to continue that that, uh, that theme and, and just talk a little bit more on that tonight. Uh, she is uh, busy being healed right now. She's, she's a conquering spirit of sickness right now, so we're just... We're just uh, thankful for that, and we're in agreement with her healing and her, uh, her revelation in that. So, so she wasn't able to make it down tonight, and so I know she's praying for me upstairs and yeah. probably watching on YouTube. And, and Pastor Tommy was taking care of her, so I, I was called upon to, to speak. So I'm thankful for that. Thank you. Praise God. So, all right. So uh, a couple things that I that I that I gathered from from Pastor Lynette's speaking, was to be full of God's love, you have to be, you have to meditate in God's word, yeah. which seems pretty obvious, but, you know, with the way that, that 2016 and, and, and the way things are moving, you know, we feel like we don't have a lot of time for things. And so to meditate, you have to sit and you have to study and you have to, 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 to ponder and to think and to, to research and write down and, and recite and you have to uh, commit to memory and all these things, and, and it takes time. So we have to meditate in God's word in prayer, study, and worship. We don't we don't just you know breeze through our Bibles, you know read one scripture a day, which is good. You, you should always be reading your word, but you don't want to just breeze through it as something you just do. You want to sit down and think about what God's word and let it minister to you. Let it let it change, re renew your mind and, and renew your spirit daily. So with that being said. Uh, New Year's is always a, a conflicting time for me uh, for, 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 for many different reasons, but mostly I just don't like the idea of New Year's resolutions. I don't, I don't like that, the fact that people just that they, they, they pick one day out of the year and say, brand new me. You know, every day is a brand new you. Every day you are renewing your mind. Every day you are growing and maturing and you are changing. So you can don't pick one day out of the year and s just say something randomly, you know, that you want to change about yourself. You know, you work at you work at these things daily, and you you continue to grow and you continue to mature in these things daily. So I'm not one that really makes New Year's resolutions. Uh, I don't say something one time and just expect it to be different. You know, but what I do do is I confess. I confess over my life daily. I confess over my life on New Year's Day, the day after New Year's, every day after that. So with that being said, we're going to turn to our John 14. And this is just before I start the actual message. We're going to turn to John 14, and we're going to start at verse 13. Just give me a quick amen when you guys have got it. Amen. Amen. Still a few pages. So hang out. All right. Verse 13 says, And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So we don't just say things that we want. We don't just say things, but we petition God in his name, in Jesus' name. So we go in knowing that we have a purpose behind what we're saying, and we have someone that we're asking so we're not, just, we're not just saying things, but we have, we're actually asking somebody who is able to perform what we're asking for in our lives, able to bring it to pass. Right. So with that, we're going to go to James 1. I'm going to start at verse 5. And same thing, just give me amen when you get there. Two amens. Amen. <laughs> Just messing with you. All right. So it reads: If you, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, without doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. So, beyond our asking. We have to ask without doubting. Amen. 
So there can't be a modicum or, uh, or even a, a smidgen of doubt or fear essentially what it, is essentially what it boils down to in when we're asking God for. So if I'm asking God to help me pay my rent this month and I'm doubting that his ability to perform it, which doesn't always mean that you doubt that you'll get, get the rent paid. It, it mean, you, you may doubt his word in other areas. So I may ask for God to pay my rent or to pay my, help me pay my car note because I'm short, but I don't tie. You know, or I don't, you know, I, I don't trust him with my money. So why would he give me money if I can't trust him with my money? You know? So it's not always, it's not always in exactly what you're asking for. You always you want to make sure that you don't have fear in any, uh, I say department, I've been working too many jobs, uh, uh, but uh, in any uh, area of, of his word. So it's not just, uh, you know, I ask God for such and such, but I don't believe in healing. You know, you, you, have, to, you have to believe God at his word in all, in all areas. So, so we're going to scroll down. We're going to stay in James 1. We're going to skip down to verse 22. All right. It reads, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. 23 reads, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face. In, oh, I didn't mean to be 23. Sorry about that. <laughs> but it was supposed to be 22. I just added 23. So, but when, when we're going to, you know, I was, I was talking about speech, but just uh, hearing the word and not putting action behind it is, is, is the same thing as just saying something and, and having fear. So you're, 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 you're depending on yourself, essentially, to get things done. So you, you hear the word, but that's, if that's enough for you, then nothing's going to come to pass in your life. And so, I wrote down, just saying, just saying things that aren't the word isn't going to do anything. And just hearing the word isn't enough. There has to be action behind both. That's right. That's so, right. Amen. speaking of action, we're speaking about intentional love tonight. Intentional love. So, defining intentional is uh, to, to be done on purpose uh, and to be deliberate. So there has to be action. Your, your actions have to have purpose behind them. They have to be deliberate. You have to have a specific reason for why you're saying, why you're doing, why, what you're hearing, and, and the action behind it, and what you're going to do with what you hear. You can't just uh, do things without intention, or without a specific motive. That's right. That's right. So many people think that having a motive or an intention for doing good things is a bad thing. Having a selfish motive is a bad thing. But we should always have a motive for everything that we do, especially when it comes to loving those around us. Yeah. So we're going to turn to John 3. We're going to start at verse 16. One amen. Got two? Got two? Can I get three? Four? Amen. All right, here we go. That sounds, that sounds more like it. Okay. Trying to trick me. <laughs> Reads, uh, for God so loved the world. It's a very, very uh, familiar scripture amongst us, I'm sure. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. So God so loved the world that he sent his son. His love had a motive. What was the motive? That whoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. So he had a purpose behind his love, and his love provoked him to action. So what, what, what we have to do is take God's model, and when we do something out of love, make sure we're doing it with a purpose, and make sure it's a godly purpose. Make sure that it's edifying. Make sure that it is 
uplifting. Make sure that it is not so that, oh man, look what TJ did. TJ, TJ, you know, gave somebody a hundred dollars and you know, in front of like 50 people, you know, just to, just to show off or just to, to say I did something. But make sure that you, you're doing, you, what, what you're doing uh, is going to be changing or is going to be uh, uplifting and, 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 and is going to show that Christ is living inside of you and that, that, and that God resides in you. God's intention, his purpose when concerning his love was our salvation. His loving, intention, his loving intention prompted him to action. He gave it all, and he did whatever it took. That is, every time I read that scripture, I always think about how I could never make that sacrifice myself personally. I, 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 I tell Crystal, well, I tell my wife Crystal, that I, I don't even like letting people watch Madison, let alone I wouldn't give her up for the world, you know, like, and so... It's just, and Madison's my daughter, for those who, who don't know, a little four-year-old. And uh, be five next week. So, hallelujah. Praise God. But, uh, so, but he did whatever it took. You know, your intention, you have to, when, when you have uh, love that, you, that we're trying to, you know, 2016, we're, we're trying to, and, and I'll, get back, I'll get into it later on in, in the sermon, but when, when, when loving people and when, and when, ah, I'm going to say this, when loving people and when acting out our love towards people, you don't want to be timid. You don't want to be shy. You don't want to, you want to be bold and you want to be, uh, you, want to, you want to do whatever it takes to make sure that people's lives are changing. Because in the, when, 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 we have to, when we have to speak to God and he asks us, you know, well, why didn't you talk to so-and-so? I put them in your face every day, you know, at, at, at where, where maybe, where maybe we, you work at a job or a secular job or anything like that. I put them in your face every day. You guys had conversations about everything. Why didn't you ever bring me up? Why didn't you ever, you know, you know and, or, or on the flip side, what, what would be worse? If, what if that person doesn't make it to heaven and they're looking up at you like, dude, we talked every day. We spoke every day. You didn't love me enough to tell me that this, this was a possibility for me? And so those are things that we have to think about because they're real scenarios that are, that are, that are possibly going to play out in, in people's lives all around the world. And so we have to make sure that we keep these things in mind and our love has intention behind it. So let's turn to Romans. We're going to go to Romans 12, sorry. Let's go to Romans We're going to start at verse 9 and roll all the way down to 21. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. So, verse 9 reads, Romans 12, 9 reads, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So a funny thing when I was when I was studying this, and that's why it's important to study. This is why it's important. When I read for doing so, I've read this this verse so many times, and and when I always get to for doing so, you will, you will heap coals of fire on his head. I've always envisioned somebody actually pouring coals, like it would feel like they they were so ashamed that they were you know there were fiery coals on their head, and so that's how I always interpreted it. And so when I was studying it today, 
actually what that, that, that uh, uh, refers to is, is that the people back in the day used hot coals to heat and to cook their food uh, during that time period. So what would happen is if somebody needed uh, hot coals, they would go to their neighbor's house and with a, with a basket on their head and, and have, uh, have unheated coals in their head and go to their neighbor and heat their neighbor and in return would give them hot coals. And so they were actually saying that you would, you would reward them with something. You know, you, you, would, you, would, you would give them something that they didn't have before. And so, and so that's amazing. That's why it's an important to study because I could have lived all my life and not known that, you know? And so that's just it's not, not cool. So, and I'm a minister, so how about that? So, but it says, are you willing, I, I have written here, are you willing to do whatever it takes? Are you willing to shed your hypocrisy and deal with others' hypocrisy lovingly? Are you willing to bless those who curse us? Are you willing to cry with those who are mourning? Because we are all able, but not many people are willing. Yes. And that's how, that's how it is in most arenas in life. It, you always find that there's like top 10%, everybody else is in the middle, and then there's some that just don't care. You know, I, I find that out in every job I've worked, and uh, everything that I've, I've tried. I've been at the top, middle, and the bottom of, of plenty of different areas in my life. And so, this right here is not an easy thing to do. And you know the old saying that nothing, that nothing worth having comes free? You know, this, you pay a hefty price to love people unconditionally. You pay a hefty price to love people who don't love you, you who hate you, who, want to, who would rather see you uh, be harmed and then to prosper. You pay a hefty price for that. You look like a fool. I, okay, <laughs> you look like a fool. You look, you know, you look ridiculous, you know. And so you have to be willing, and, and, and that's the whole thing behind having uh, intention and having motives. You have to know why you're loving people. I don't, I don't just love Kelsey, I don't love Pastor Tommy, uh, Miss Janice, and nobody else on the front row over there, but, but uh, I don't love anybody expecting anything in return, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not even their love. Mm -hmm. you know, I know as, as believers and disciples that they love me back, right. but I don't, I don't love anybody expecting anything but God's love in return. Uh, and, 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 the, and, the, and the knowledge that I'm doing his word and being obedient uh, into his word, into, into his will. So, so hypocrisy, ah, that is, that's one, one thing that, that always bugs me. So I, I'm picking on myself when I'm when speaking about how hard and, and the price you have to pay. I don't like hypocrisy at all. I don't like when people tell you not to do something that they do. Or, 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 or even worse, tell you not to do something that they do, and they try and hide the fact that they do it. It makes me, it makes me not, not happy. So I, I said, hypocrisy does one thing. It robs people of hope. When you shun someone when they go through something you've, always been, that you've already been through, or that they, excuse me, let me reread that. I said, hypocrisy robs people of hope. When you shun someone when they go through something that you've already been through, or encourage somebody else through, you take away the hope that you could have given them. In turn, for their potential repentance, it turns into resentment. So, I have uh, talked, yeah. Uh, so, uh, hypocrisy robs people of hope. When you shun someone, when they go through something that you've already been through, or encourage somebody else through, you take away the hope that you could have given them. In turn, their potential for repentance decreases due to resentment. So, so tell me, so, uh, so Madison grows up and say, I tell her, Madison, don't play with rocks, you know, and I'm taking it real light here. So, so I'm taking it real light. Say, Madison, don't play with rocks, you know, rocks are dangerous, rocks break things. And she goes out and she busts a window with a rock. She goes up to this big glass window and she's a rock and she just launches it through for whatever reason, you know, and, I, and I'm like, Madison, you're the worst. I, oh my goodness, I can't believe you did that. You know, knowing that I've had plenty of missions, I've done that exact same thing, as a matter of fact, uh, when, I was, when I was a teenager, and you know, and I, and I make her feel bad for making a mistake, you know. Now, now she already feels bad because she made, that she made a mistake because she knows that I told her not to do it and she did a bad thing that has repercussions. Me piling on top of that doesn't do anything for her 
uh, repentance. She doesn't, she's, she, she's not going to be sorry for me piling on more stuff that, she, that she's been through. And, and, that's, and that's a light thing. So there are people, people who, who have been on drugs, people who you know, have, have uh, been in, uh, 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 what's, what's the word, uh, have had uh, infidelities in their lives and their relationships. There's people, people who have been through so many things, and, and that's, that's the biggest thing with me when I when I've grown up. When, because I was I was pretty naive when I was growing up. I was very naive. I, I, you know, I didn't I didn't have many friends, and I didn't I didn't hang out with a lot of people. So when I grew up, and I you know I started a, my circle of uh, social circle got bigger, and I and more people were in it, and, and they would tell me stories of their life, and I was like, that's a thing, you know, like. I, I, I can't believe it, you know, I, 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 I never knew what, outside of like media outlets, I never knew what drugs were, or, you know, in real life. I've never seen like weed or crack or, or stuff like that in, in real life growing up. And so my, my initial reaction, because I never partook in any of those things, was to be hypocritical. I would say things, I would be like, man, dude, it's, 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 just, just don't do it anymore, you know? Not knowing that addiction is a real thing. Not knowing that, you know, uh, condemnation is a real thing. It's, it's not easy to tell somebody that you've, that you've done bad. It's not easy to, to confess to somebody that, 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 uh, that you don't know, especially, that you've done something that, that may have hurt somebody else or hurt yourself or hurt your family. And so, I, you know, that's something that I had to grow up in, and it's something that I had to intentionally push to the side when dealing with love, when, when loving others, and, and speaking to others, and, and talking them through things. So, that's like it. So what does being intentional look like in today's world? All right, we're gonna go to Luke chapter seven. I'm gonna start at verse 11. Just holler at me when you get there. Amen. Amen. All right. That's what's up. Okay. So, reads, now it happened the day after that, this is uh, talking about uh, Jesus, it says that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him in a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. When he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. So when he who was dead sat up and began, to, so he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. Then fear came upon all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. So intentional love causes you to move. We saw that with the father, and we're seeing it here with the son. Intentional love causes you to move. It excites compassion and empathy and makes you act on it. Don't buy into the thought that people don't change or can't change. It is impossible to go through life and not change. The only thing that doesn't change is God's word. You're going to move, you're gonna buy a car, you're gonna try new foods, and at the very least, you're gonna age. People change every day. And I turn 33 next week too, so praise God. Praise God. <laughs> People change every day, and we have to let God in us be the catalyst for spiritual change. So the, the, the one thing that I see, you know, in 2017 and in, in, in the last probably five or ten years or so has been the lack of empathy and compassion uh, within people. And, and it's not so much that they mean to be or they are, are just built that way, but just the way uh, the technology has moved and you have so much like social media and, and you don't have to be face-to-face uh, -face with somebody to be heard. So my, my thing is, excuse me, my thing has always been don't, don't put something out there that somebody can read that you won't say to me. 
You know, I've, 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 and, I, and, I, and I've seen it, I've seen it plenty of places. I've, you know, I've seen people, people talk to, <laughs> talk to me one day, and then the thing that I'm talking to them about in person, they yeah. put it on Facebook, but just don't say my name. Just don't say it's me, you know? And so that's, that's hurtful. That's, that's hurt. and, and they do it and never see you again. You know, they, 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 they move or, or they just don't come around you because they don't want to confront you about it. Uh, intentional love is confrontational. It's not combative, but it is confrontational. I have to, I have to, to deal with you on a personal level to love you. If I, if I don't, and this is, this is me dispute if you want, but I don't, I don't love you if I tell you to change from a distance. If I tell you you need to do this or you need to do this, blah 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 blah, and push sin, but I don't provide you with solutions or attempt to, to give you a helping hand uh, personally. And so, and so we, were, we were here Monday night uh, for a corporate prayer and uh, we, we split up in a couple groups and we had some things that, you know, that we desired to see in, a, in Life Point and, and things to change in, uh, for 2017. Uh, and a lot, an overwhelming theme kept coming up was a uh, relational unity and closer connection so nobody has to deal with things alone was one thing that was said. Uh, intentional church relationships that extend beyond the church role. Face-to-face uh, -face communication. Those were, those were a few of the things that, that came up. And it's, and it's so important, especially in this day and age, to connect with people. To connect with people on an extremely personal level because we're family, you know. We don't, we don't choose our family. We all, none of us chose, nobody chose for me to come to Iowa besides, besides God and, and myself, my family. You know, nobody chose for you guys to, to come in here. The Holy Spirit guided you here and you obeyed and, and now we're family. And so, and so I can't distance myself from, from my dad, Pastor Tommy. I can't distance myself from him because he's always gonna be my father. He's always gonna be my dad. So I'm, I'm gonna have to deal with him but yeah, one way or another for the, for, the rest of the, for the rest of my life. So, and so we have to be intentional and we have to be confrontational. We have to, we have to engage each other. You know, you know we, we, I see Dave, Brother Dave uh, every, every time I'm in here, first thing he does is give me a hug. You know, he's, he's always touching on people, man. He's always touching on you. And so, but it feels good. It feels, it, feels, yeah, it feels good. It makes me feel loved. It makes me, you know, it, makes me look, it has, gives me something to look forward to when I come to church. And so we have to make sure that we are engaging everybody. So once, once somebody walks through that door and they're saying, you know, they're, they're uh, a guest, uh, and they are potentially family. You know, they're potentially a new member of our family. And, you know, if you see people uh, outside uh, randomly, and you speak to them, and you let them know, oh, well, I came from, I'm from LifePoint. You know, they're potentially family. And so we want to we want to treat everybody as if we, like we would treat our own family, our own brothers and sisters. And so uh, I've had I've had a few opportunities this last couple weeks ago. There was a, a, a older lady. She was stranded outside of uh, where I turned to go into my apartment complex, and she was standing on uh, 965 going towards North Liberty, and there's a left turn on Oakdale that where that leads to my to where I live. So don't follow me home, but. <laughs> But uh, she was stranded, and she was the only car in front of me, so I thought she was just, she, her left blink was, I wasn't paying attention fully, and I thought her left blink was on, she just wasn't moving. And so I was like, ding, 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 like got on the horn, beep, 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 get moving. And so I saw her hazards flashing. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And so I saw her hazards flashing, and so I got out the car, you know, like, is everything okay? You know, I asked her all the questions. Did you have anybody coming? Did you call anybody? And she told me that, no, her car just stopped and wouldn't start again, so I told her, wait, I'll go grab something that might be able to get your car started. So I went home, I had Madison in the back with me, and so I went home, Madison's like, what's going on, Daddy, what are we doing? And I said, well, we gotta help this lady. You know, you know she's, and, she, she, and whenever I tell her something, she just repeats it, so I, I said, maybe I've gotta help this lady. She said, we gotta help this lady? I said, yeah, her car won't start. Her car won't start? I said, yeah, it won't start, I don't know why. She said, you don't know why? I said, <laughs> Like, no, I don't. So I go, I get it, I have a little battery uh, starter. Uh, and so I grabbed it, 
took it to her, and <laughs> right. So, so I took it to her, took it to the lady that was stranded, and there was somebody else that was helping her also. And so she, he, he had got her. He'd been thinking a little bit faster than me, and he put her car in neutral and pushed her off the, you know, onto the onto a uh, deserted road. And so I tried to get the car started, and my hands are freezing. It's like nine degrees outside, and my my I don't have any gloves on, and my you know how fast it is to for your hands to just freeze up and how long it takes for them to thaw back out. And so I'm sitting there fumbling with all this stuff and her car won't start. And so I'm like, come on. Man. And so she's like, well, I think I have some jumper cables. Uh, maybe that will help. And so uh, we, I, we, she, uh, the guy has some jumper cables and she couldn't get her trunk open in her car to get her jumper cable. Or get her, oh, he didn't have jumper cables. She had some in, her, in the back of her car and she couldn't get her trunk open. And so we were like, this is amazing. Amazing, amazing. My hands are freezing, and Madison's in the car, and so, so we ended up pushing her to the to the side of, uh, to a abandoned parking lot, and leaving it there. And she went with the the fellow to to go get some extra help, but I could have just left her, you know. <laughs> I could have just left. I wanted to leave because it was cold. I had my daughter with me. I had every excuse to to not do it, you know. I had reasonable excuses to not do it, but the Holy Spirit talked to me, and love is intentional. You do whatever it takes, and so. For, for, for all people. And so another, another, uh, another thing is uh, Crystal, Crystal and I, like when I said the, the, the first of the year is, is a tough time for me, is uh, my sister's birthday is on January 30th, I mean January 30th, it's on December 31st, New Year's Eve. And so and I'm putting my daughter to bed last night and she's, this is today, what's today, Wednesday, I don't know, take that back. But I'm putting her to bed last night and and she was actually up. She's usually asleep when I get home uh, after 8 o'clock. And so she's up and playing around and stuff. And, and so we put her to bed, and I'm, I usually rub her back, and I stroke her hair when, she, when she's laying down. And, and, uh, and so I'm just sitting with her. And uh, around this time, I'm always thinking about uh, Dominique is my sister's name. And so um, I'm like, man, this is, it would be so cool if she could just be here, and, and you know, I know she's she's looking down and looking at us, and 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 so I look I look over outside the the door, and I glance down, and I have a tattoo of her name on my shoulder, and I just start to feel tears coming. So I'm like, oh, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. So I, I tell Madison, all right, Daddy's gotta go potty. <laughs> I, I didn't have to, I didn't have to do the bathroom. I just had to get out of there. But I'll be right back, okay? And so I go out there. I go out to the living room and I'm pacing and trying to just calm myself down so I can put Madison to bed. And I look at and there's a, I put a picture of her. Uh, I had moved one of her pictures from the shelf, bookshelf, to our kitchen counter, and I have to walk past it in the living room. And so I look, glance over. I just glanced at the picture and just busted out crying. I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting down. I'm trying to muffle my cries because Crystal's in in the bedroom watching TV, and I don't want her coming out and messing with me. So. <laughs> Not like making fun of you, but like just, you know, just being a loving wife. And so, so I'm trying to muffle it, and she asked me a question. She, she didn't know I was crying or anything. She says, TJ, she asked me some question, random question, and I, was, and I didn't answer her because I was trying to, you know, suck it all up and before I, you know, you know how you, when you're crying and you try and speak and you're like, nah. you know, I didn't want that. And so she comes out because I'm not answering her fast enough, and she sees me bawling on the floor. <laughs> last night. Oh man, uh, she sees me bawling on the floor, and and she's like, "Oh baby, you know she's yeah, she's my baby, she's my wife." She so she came up to me, she gives me this this huge hug, you know, and and she's just rocking me. I'm crying into her shoulder, and I'm just like, you know, she said, "What's wrong?" I said, "I, I miss Dominique," <laughs> and you know, I'm, I'm just a, a mess at this point, just just crying, and she's she's just she's just there, and so. Just imagine being that way with somebody that you don't know. Imagine, ima um, just, just envision yourself going to that level of love for people that you, you, you don't know, for people, that, for people that, that hate you, for people that despise you. And, and there you have the model that Jesus set before us. Amen. He died for people who... who who killed him? He, he you know, he, he didn't just just die for it. He, we, not we, but but the uh, people killed him. You know, he was he was he was murdered for for our sins, for 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 the bad that we did. You know, and so 
just, uh, just, just this year, you know, every day, just think about the intentions behind the things that we do. You know, what is our motive for our love? What is our motive for, for our, our caring and, our, and our, our acts? You know, what is the motive behind our worship, our study time, our prayer, uh, our giving, our tithing, things like that? So it should always be motivated by love. It always should be motivated by God's word. So, Amen. so a couple things. Um, uh, don't forget uh, the offering we're taking in the bag on, on the way out. And uh, Pastor Tommy has something that he would like to, to share with you guys. So after that, you guys are good. <laughs>